Over the last few weeks, we've had a ton of fun with these what would you buy for some theoretical budget discussion panels. And so this week, I thought I would ask my friends what they would buy for $250,000. Now, of course, a quarter million dollars is a ton of money, but it's also usually a pretty competitive and congested value space for new supercars. It's about what it takes to buy a new V8 Ferrari or a McLaren or a V10 Lamborghini, even a really high-end Porsche. And so uh, to me, it's a really, really interesting space also because there's a lot of gravity for pre-owned cars towards that price point. Higher end exotics kind of depreciate and then hang out in that kind of value vicinity. And a lot of significant vintage cars also climb up there. So I was curious to see what they were going to say, but obviously for me, it's always gonna be a V12 Lamborghini. At 250 grand, you could buy a really solid Aventador, at least a 13 or 14 coupe, probably even at this point, a 14 or 15 Roadster. You gotta be a little bit careful with the gearboxes. They're expensive when they break and there are some maintenance liabilities there, but I love Aventadors. They're a ton of fun. You could also buy kind of a driver quality Diablo 6.0. Brilliant car, tough to put a ton of miles on, honestly, but beautiful to own, really, really cool, and probably going up in value. But obviously for me, it's going to be a mercy. I love the LP640. I've bought a couple really rough example manual LP640s for less than 250 grand, but I think right now I know where they're all at. It would take at least 350 to 400 to buy one, so that doesn't work here. But you could certainly get an E-Gear car, and they are awesome. The sticks are better, but the E-Gear cars are tons of fun. 070809, you're not gonna pay 250, you're gonna pay 200, 220 grand and love every minute of it. I love them, I've had a bunch of them and you should buy one if you can. However, I wanted to hear what everybody else would say and these were their answers. I would go with a McLaren 720S. They were $400,000 new, but thanks to the McLaren depreciation, you can get them for $250,000. That's hypercar performance for the price of a supercar. I would put a set of downpipes on it send it over to Dino Spectrum for a tune, and you'd be running nine and a half second quarter miles. You can't beat that. So obviously a lot of interesting cars in this range. Huracan, 720S, 488. For me, the Ferrari wins on looks, but I might have to take the McLaren to drive. Now, there is one other car that I must admit I'm interested to see, which is the new Tesla Roadster. I assume any of these others will beat it around the track, but two seconds, zero to 60, and my kids fit in the back? Not bad. First impression was, yeah, that's Lamborghini Huracan versus Ferrari 488 GTB territory. And then I thought, no, I, anybody could choose those cars. That's boring. Let's go for something really, really special, interesting, and unusual in that category. The world's greatest vintage air-cooled 911 from Acumoto. Akimoto Motorsports, longtime friends of mine, run by Mark White up in Madison, Wisconsin. He builds them, he races them, and he says they're better than singers. And I think a singer versus Akimoto, perfect air-cooled 911 face-off would make an incredible video, wouldn't it? It's a lot of money, but I like a 1962 Maserati 3500 GT I for injected that I saw online today. Uh, it's a really original car from the description. It looks like several of the past owners or people I've met. So I may even have seen this car in person before. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I have. For $250,000, there's only one real choice for me. Early 70s, 80s, Aston Martin, DBS, V8, Vantage. Preferably the manual gearbox, I think. It still feels like an American muscle car, but like a tailored suit. But my choice isn't so much about what $250,000 buys, it's, it's what you don't get for $250,000. You see, you don't get standard air conditioning or a radio. Uh, there's no navigation for $250,000. Come on. No turbochargers, no superchargers. There, we, we don't want a robot shifting the gears. We will do it ourselves. The crazy part is I'm not talking about some mid-60s Italian Grand Tour. I'm talking about a car built in 2016. I'm talking about the Porsche 911R. <laughs> this car is an exercise in irony. It is a basic driver's car with a magnesium roof. You've got a carbon fiber hood, trunk, frunk, whatever Porsche calls that thing in the front. The engine's out back and it is glorious. Normally aspirated, creates 500 horsepower. If I had to spend 250 grand in a car, I'd really want the full driving experience. And I don't think anything gets you more of that for the money than a Type 35 Bugatti. 
Nope, you can't buy the real one for 250 grand, but you can buy one of the Persang replicas, and I think those are pretty awesome. That and maybe a C-Type Jaguar. Nope, you can't buy those for 250 grand either, but you can buy an awesome replica. Either one of those two things, they'd be first on my list. $250,000 this week, finally cars that we can dream about. Now my choice is very personal, it's a very emotional choice for me, and it is the 93 slash 94 Ferrari 512 TR. I talked about some of the adventures I had in one of those, one of my first racing sponsors had one and would throw me the keys to it all the time, and it was life altering to say the least. Two things in particular stand out. Firstly, the car styling, which is a snapshot of the late 80s, early 90s, which is awesome in its own. Uh, and secondly, the freaking noises that thing made. Some of the sounds it made from the click clank of the shifter to that big V12. Remember, it's a 180 degree V12, not a flat 12 having to do with the firing order, according to Ferrari. Um, but what a noise, amazing. But rather than describe it to you, I have a clip from the interwebs and you can have a listen. Amazing, yes please, 512TR. Sure, for $250,000, you could go buy a mildly mass-produced used supercar, or you could get behind the wheel of a legendary Group C or IMSA GTP car that perhaps turned a wheel in the 1980s at Le Mans or the 24 Hours of Daytona. Now, for that price, you're not gonna get a winning car, but you can get some awesome machinery, like the twin turbo, March Buick, or the 962 powered Porsche Grid, or the one of a kind Royale RP4. Now all of these cars will give you entry to some of the most amazing historic races in the world, including Le Mans Classic, where you could race against the legends of the sport. There is no used supercar that's gonna give you that experience and go up in value while you race it. All right, guys, $250,000 is a crap load of money. Let's not forget that. So frankly, you could have your own car collection, and that amount of money is worth more than all the motor vehicles I own, including enough money for a heck of a down payment on a house. But today, let's have a little bit of fun. If I was gonna go the exotic street car route, I'd go out and buy a stick shift Murcielago and a Gallardo for my wife. That'd be a lot of fun. But if I really wanted to be me and just spend money, <laughs> I would go out and find a late 70s, early 80s Cosworth DFV powered Formula One car with less history. You, you can squeeze into one of those, have an awesome time, or you could even go the route of finding a 1990s Formula One car, perhaps a Tyrrell with a Judd four liter V10 engine in it and absolutely haul the mail. So get creative and have fun guys. For $250,000, there's a number of offerings available. However, one that you should seriously consider, the SLR McLaren. This is an iconic car, hands down. This was made by Mercedes-Benz and McLaren uh, before McLarens were really a thing. Before the 12C came out, there were about 2,000 of these made, and it's just an amazing car. Okay, so a $250,000 car is completely out of my price range and out of my wheelhouse. But what I'd go for is either a Plymouth Superbird or a Dodge Daytona. So quantifiably, the absolute best driver's car you could get for two hundred fifty grand is a Ford GT. But I feel like that answer is a little bit too cliche, and it's not what I would pick. I would go with a 1999 Lamborghini Diablo SV because I had this on my wall when I was a kid. It's a sweet car to drive. It's got a V12. It's got all of the Italian personality. And of course, being a burgundy guy, I would get it in the quintessential Rosso Vic color. I've been lucky enough where I've driven a lot of different things and people have uh, given me their cars, whether they trust me or I've just got one of those uh, good faces, I guess. I don't know, but uh, for me, if you really want a connoisseur's car that says, I know cars and I know performance, there is nothing better than the 2018 or 2019 McLaren 720S Performance Edition. Well, it's a pretty tough question, and I'm sure most of everyone's going to say the exact same thing, these exact same cars, but uh, it's either a uh, Mercedes uh, McLaren SLR or Arnold Schwarzenegger's custom uh, 1977 Unimog. 
My choice at this price range would be a special Italian car, the Ferrari 458 Special. And you can get a high mileage one in Europe for under 250 these days. And that's where I'd want to have it, right by the Autobahn and by the racetrack. So I could just keep it there and do my favorite type of driving. What's up guys? So if there's one car I'd have to choose for 250,000, it would definitely be a special edition Lamborghini Diablo. One of the cars like a Diablo SV or 6.0, the later cars after 1995, they have power steering, the AC is really improved and the clutch is not as stiff as an early car. So for $250,000, you can buy a lot of cars, but only one is correct, and that is a 2016 McLaren 675 LT. This is one of 500, and well, this one was a lot less than 250 grand, but you can get a running, driving, good condition one for around that price point. Mine would be this, 2005, 2006 Ford GT, right? So super cool doors, albeit very impractical. 5.4 liter supercharged V8, 550 horse, 500 pound feet of torque. Overall, awesome styling, mimicking the GT40 from the 60s, the Ferrari killer. I can tell you really would have to be between the Rolls Royce Dawn or this car, but I think it's really gonna be this car because I think this is one of the best values in the world right now for under $250,000. Now, if you look online, you'll see prices for $300,000 or so, but you can actually buy cars like these for $250,000 or less if you are good at negotiating. I just bought this one. This is a 2006 four option for $240,000 or so. For $250,000, I feel like I've got to go with the Lamborghini, one of two models, both are V12s. One, I would go with a 2001 Lamborghini Diablo, or two, uh, I would go with the Lamborghini Aventador LP 700-4. Now, $250,000 is an unusual price point for me to actually even consider. I either think of very cheap cars or incredibly expensive cars. So for $250,000, I actually found a pair of beautiful 2014 Aston Martin Vantage V8 GT4s. Why two? Well, one, they fit the budget, and two, the wife and I can go racing because the family that races together stays together. I found this very cool Ferrari 512 PB, barely 50,000 kilometers. Well, the price tag is actually 250,000 euros, but you know, it's, it's, it's very close. I would have to negotiate a bit. I would actually get the Mercedes-Benz AMG GTR, and I was between that and a 911 Turbo S, which is basically the ultimate supercar, can do everything. But if I have $250,000, I want something that's gonna be sporty and it's going to be uh, a little bit track focused, but can also be comfortable um, and not necessarily a daily driver because you probably have another daily driver that you can use. There's so many great choices for 250,000. One of the most fun cars to drive are anything in the Uracon line. And actually I think the Performante even more so than the Evo is the car to have. I've never been in the market for a car that's even remotely close to $250,000, but if I was, I would look for a Ferrari 488 twin turbo 3.9 liter V8 with 660 horsepower. This car is Italian. I'm Italian. I think we're a perfect fit, although I might look for one that is in slightly better condition. This guy's seen much better days. What would I buy for $250,000? I could probably get a really nice car, but would I? Let's be honest, no, I wouldn't. I would use that same money to buy a house in like Baxter Springs, Kansas or someplace like that. And then I'd just fill up a 10 bay garage with old Novas and junk muscle cars and sedans and things like that. Cause I can't help myself. I mean, God, look at all this crap, you know? All right, guys, my pick for the best car under $250,000 is actually a pretty easy choice for me. It's the McLaren 720S. Insane performance stats, incredible styling, and basically left a lot of its competitors in the dust for a couple of years after it was released. The only fault, not the most reliable car in McLaren stable, but hands down my pick. I would go with a 2016 580-2 Lamborghini Huracan with a twin turbo kit. You can actually find that realistically now. There are so many twin turbo kits being put out on the market that you could buy a secondhand Huracan with the kit already, already installed. Or if your budget was $250,000, you could easily buy the car and then take it to a shop for a stage one, roughly just short of 1,000 horsepower to the crank. 
So for me, I'm going to go with the exotics, not the Germans this time, but the Italians. So I'm going to go with the 2020 Ferrari Portofino. This is almost 600 horsepower coming from a V8. You got hard top convertible, Ferrari Promenades, one of the best Grand Tours that you can get in the business. For $250,000, I found a rare gated 2005 Murcielago Roadster. It's about 24,000 miles. Clean Carfax, but unfortunately the car is pretty rough. It's been around the world, Germany, Hawaii. Actually, while it was in Hawaii, it was impounded by the police. It's been in Florida, registered in California, Ohio, and now it's available in Alberta, Canada. I would want something comfortable. I'd want something fast. And I'd want something, I don't know, it's damn near bulletproof. I'm going to have to go with an AMG G-Wagon. I love these things. We got a local guy, Stephen Wonderboy. He's got one. I rode in his. I love it. Definitely, for about 250 Gs, I'm going to have to do the loaded out G-Wagon. All right, $250,000. Number one option for me would be McLaren 720S. Someone's already lost like $200,000 on it. The downside is they're not reliable and it'll continue to depreciate. The upside is the car is really fast, really fun to drive, especially on the track. You got a lot of options, but why not be unique and different? That's what I'm about, that's what I like. A car you never see that is beautiful, the nicest interior of any car I think I've ever seen anywhere, the Spiker C8 La Violette. You definitely won't run into another one at the local car show, probably not. For 250 grand, there is only one choice, and that would be to purchase a higher mileage 430 Scuderia and then send it to Texas to have the boys at European Auto Group do one of their six-speed swaps. I drove that car about a year ago, and still to this day, no experience in my life whatsoever has added up to the greatness it was driving the world's only manual-swapped Scuderia. One of my favorite cars of all time is in this price segment, so I'm gonna go with my heart. I'm gonna choose a 1965 Porsche 356 SC Cabriolet. If you buy the right one, chances are you're gonna still have your $250,000 a couple of years down the line. Awesome answers, everybody. Thank you all so much. If you think we're all wrong, let us know in the comments what you would buy for $250,000. Obviously, there's a lot of fun options. Next week, we're gonna do $25,000, so be sure to tune in next Friday for that video. As always, thank you to Premier Financial Services for sponsoring this video and the month's videos of car stories here on the VinWiki channel. Be sure to let them know how much you appreciate that, but this was really kind of the perfect example of what Premier is great for. Leasing a car like this through their simple lease program Program can make a ton of sense and make it a whole lot easier to afford. As an example, like let's say you look at a Ford GT, you know, 230, 40 grand car, you're probably going to put down about 10% as a cap cost reduction, which works like a down payment. And then they're going to give you a residual, probably a little over 50% for a great car like that that's not depreciating really rapidly. It might be lower if you are buying a brand new McLaren, but at the end of the day, it can work really, really well on cars that are already somewhat value stable. You'll probably have another 5 to 10% in upfront taxes, your first and last month's payment and stuff like that, but about 20 percent of the car's value out of pocket. Now they set it up as a 60 month term with a residual, which works kind of like a balloon. But the great thing is because of the lease structure, most of their clients are actually writing the cars off through small businesses. So they're paying with pre-tax money. So they enjoy all the benefits and the equity accumulation that can happen throughout the amortization schedule, which they provide of a normal finance arrangement, but you get all the benefits of a lease. And on an example like that car, like a Ford GT, your payment's gonna be just over $2,000 for a car like that. It's not nothing, but it's a whole lot easier than writing a check for 250 grand. So be sure to check them out at the link in the description below and see how they can help you buy your first or your next dream car.